Hey friends, today we are laying a, a roadmap for aspiring cloud engineers in 2024. If you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Toby. I'm currently been a cloud engineer for the past two years. I've worked in technology for 10 years since I was 17 when I first did an apprenticeship. I have a lot of experience across on-premises, hybrid and cloud environments, but now I'm completely focused on cloud. So stick around and I'm going to share with you the roadmap that you need in order to become a cloud engineer in 2024 whether that is from zero experience or someone that's already working in technology and fancies a career change. Now, first things first, let's clarify what a cloud engineer actually does because some people are confused between the role of a cloud engineer, a DevOps engineer, and a platform engineer because primarily the technology skill sets on all of these jobs all match each other for some reason. And the reason for that is because we all do use actually the same technology, but our roles are very slightly different. Now, a cloud engineer and a platform engineer are pretty much the same thing. A cloud engineer builds platforms on the cloud. A platform engineer will build cloud platforms, but they also may work on hybrid or on-premises environments, which is why they are called a platform engineer. A DevOps engineer focuses on automating the delivery of software, and they primarily focus on product, where a cloud engineer will build platforms for products to be hosted on. So think of a cloud engineer as more of an infrastructure person and think of a DevOps engineer as someone who automates the delivery of software. Cloud engineering first and foremost involves designing, implementing and maintaining cloud infrastructure services and making sure they are secure. It's about leveraging cloud platforms to be scalable and efficient solutions for businesses. As a cloud engineer, you're always going to be working on cutting edge technology, whether that is with AWS, Azure, GCP, and you'll just ensure that your cloud systems are running as efficiently as possible. Now let's talk about operating systems, and the one I actually want to focus on most is Linux, because having a strong foundation in Linux is crucial for being a cloud engineer. Primarily because AWS takes up the largest market share, most people using AWS are actually using Linux. For example, if you're a corporate company that works in finance, maybe insurance, all of your employees are probably working on Windows, no one works on Linux nowadays. Now, if you have a big Windows domain, it's much easier for you to migrate over to Azure because it's a Windows-based, Microsoft-provided cloud product. If you're someone that delivers software or you're delivering products, more than likely you're going to be hosting those on Linux virtual machines, maybe Docker containers. So understanding how Linux works is essential, especially if you want to go down the AWS route. Now, that's not to say people don't use Linux on Windows or GCP because they absolutely do. So I recommend you learn Linux and Windows servers but my primary folk process for you is to focus on Linux. So you wanna invest time in actually mastering Linux commands, mastering shell scripting, and understanding systems administration. Now point two is gonna be scripting, whether that is PowerShell, Bash, or Python. As a cloud engineer, you're gonna find yourself scripting solutions to automate tasks and process. PowerShell is for Microsoft environments, Python is for versatility and Bash is for Linux systems. They are essential languages that you will need to learn. Automation doesn't only increase efficiency, but also reduces the chance of human error. So start with the basics and as you progress, delve into more advanced scripting techniques. So make sure you know what a variable is, what a for loop is, what an if else statement is, how to create a function. All these different things are very beginner, but they will set you on the right course to understand how to script. There are mini tutorials online where you can go and learn PowerShell, Python or Bash, and you can do it on your home computer for absolutely free. Now point three enters infrastructure as code, and the one I would like to focus on is Terraform. I do have a tutorial if you want to go and watch that, I'll put a link somewhere up on the video right now after this, which is very much focused towards juniors and people with zero experience. Infrastructure as code has become a cornerstone in cloud engineering. Now, Terraform is cloud agnostic, that's why I like to use it, meaning you can use it on all of the cloud providers. Now, the cloud providers do provide their own infrastructure as code, like CloudFormation on AWS or Bicep on Azure. Terraform allows you to define and provision infrastructure in a declarative configuration language. It's like having a blueprint for your cloud environment, so I strongly suggest you learn the ins and outs in Terraform to manage infrastructure efficiently and consistently across various cloud providers. For example, you one day you could be working for a technology company as a cloud engineer and you're using AWS. Something happens later on down the line, your company decides they want to make a business change, they want to move over to Azure. If you already know how to use Terraform in AWS, migrating over to Azure isn't going to be particularly difficult. You just need to learn the differences between the cloud services. Moving on to point four, another powerful tool that you're going to want to have in your locker is Ansible. 
This automation tool simplifies configuration management and application deployment. Now you may be thinking that you see this a lot more focused on DevOps engineers. And I absolutely agree, it is on a DevOps engineer's job description a lot more than it is a cloud engineer. I use Ansible in my job and I worked on a large project for a uh, public sector organization where I was able to automate their patching lifecycle. Using Ansible successfully reduced their patching time from eight hours down to two hours. It's a great tool to have in your locker, really no matter what job you're in. And because it is using YAML, it's really not difficult to pick up, just like CICD. It's handy for setting up servers, managing the configuration, and once again, just doing routing tasks that you can automate across hundreds of machines instead of logging on in individually to one of those and running a script once. You run one script across multiple machines. Moving on to point five, in my opinion, is the first or second most important, and that is networking. No cloud engineer's roadmap is complete without a solid understanding of networking. Knowledge of networking principles is fundamental to designing and maintaining cloud architectures. And that is because networking is the base layer of any architecture. The first thing you do when you deploy a cloud platform is you say, hey, what is my network gonna look like? How many subnets am I gonna have? How big is my CIDR block going to be for how many IPs I require within those subnets? Is my network going to have internet access? How am I going to secure traffic going in and going out? Do I need a firewall? And if you ask me if you're going to be a good engineer, no matter what engineer you are in technology, learn networking. I promise you, you will become 100% better at your job and more valuable. The amount of people I've met who are client engineers, DevOps engineers, platform engineers that just don't understand networking to that high of a degree is quite alarming. So the knowledge of networking is going to empower you to build robust and secure systems. And if you read the news at all, there might have companies that are being hit by cyber attacks because their network isn't secure enough, they haven't dedicated enough time to network security, is extremely alarming once again. So learn networking, it will help you. Now moving on to point six, let's talk about CI, CD or continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now you may have seen this on a lot of DevOps engineers job descriptions and you may think, well, why would a cloud engineer need to use CI, CD? They're not primarily delivering software, they're delivering cloud platforms. Well, the reason for that is cloud engineers, what we typically like to do is put our Terraforms into a CI, CD pipeline. Now picture this. You make a change to your infrastructure's code and it seamlessly flows through a pipeline. That pipeline then goes on to automatically deploy those changes to your cloud platform. In the world of cloud engineering, implementing CI-CD pipelines is a game changer. You would set up your Terraform pipeline to validate your code, plan your code, and then apply your code. And you can even set it up to destroy it if you require it to be destroyed. So it's all about ensuring that you have a smooth and controlled release process for your infrastructure's code. Also bear in mind cloud engineers as well, we may be required to create containers with Docker or do stuff with Kubernetes. And a lot of that also gets put into a CI CD pipeline. Now point seven, which is my last point, is certifications. Certifications are a tangible way to showcase your expertise. Now, do you actually need certifications? If you're someone who already works in the industry, the answer is probably not. It may be beneficial for you to learn one of the basic fundamental ones to understand what cloud services are provided by AWS or Azure. But because you have a wealth of experience already, perhaps you're a sysadmin, you already know about systems administration, probably you've done some networking, you may not really need the certification. Now, if you're someone with zero experience, you're probably gonna wanna do it anyway. But before you do a cloud one, Go to CompTIA Plus, learn about how computers work. Once you've learned about how computers work, focus some time on networking. Once you've focused on your networking, then go learn a cloud provider, then go learn infrastructure as code, and so on and so forth. It enables you to have a fundamental, foundational understanding of cloud concepts. Then as you gain experience and deepen your knowledge, you wanna aim for a more advanced certification like the AWS Solutions Architect. They don't just validate your skills, especially as someone who's new, but they're gonna open doors to you to more complex and rewarding cloud engineer jobs. And what you also need to understand, a lot of these corporate companies, especially consultancies and MSPs, the more certified staff members they have, the better rewards they get from cloud providers. So for example, let's say you have, I don't know, 100 or 200 certified AWS solutions architects on, especially at a professional level as well, you'll be able to become an AWS partner. 
that that is why certifications are valued by employers, but not 100% because you can always join and pass a certification afterwards. And if you're lucky, you may be able to join a company like myself, that's happened in the past, where they offer you an incentive to pass these certifications and they actually pay for you to sit the exam or send you on a course. And there you have it. That is the roadmap to become a cloud engineer in 2024. But do remember, it's not just about learning these tools and technologies, it's about how you actually apply them in the real world to solve problems. So stay curious, keep learning, and don't be afraid to dive into new technology. If you have found this roadmap helpful, don't forget to drop it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit the subscribe button. If you want to learn infrastructure as code, if you're interested in getting started in Terraform, you can go watch one of my other videos, and you can also watch my video on how I became a client engineer in three months. Drop a comment down below, let me know if you're going to be starting your cloud engineering journey in 2024 if you've already set aside your training platform. It would be great to know what stages some of you guys are at and I wish you all the very best on your cloud engineering journey. And as always, thank you very much for watching.